If you've been watching uh, my videos recently, you may have noticed that I've been accumulating soldering irons. I've got the USB soldering iron, I've got the cheap Beku, which is a Heiko knockoff. Um, just got a spare um, iron tip, etc., for it the other day. Um, I've been using this Weller WP35 for a few years, and I've been using this Weller, what is that, 25 watt since I was a teenager. And uh, for heavy jobs, I've got my grandfather's old soldering gun, which still works even though it looks janky as hell. Um, but I'm going to try it out too. So what I'm doing here um, is answering a question that I've got every time I introduce a new soldering iron to my pile of stuff, which is how long does it take to heat up to soldering temperature? So to answer that question, I have dug into my pile of stuff and pulled out a Nokia display, an Arduino breadboard, um, and a push button. And I have programmed said Arduino to be a basic timer. So how the methodology of my highly scientific test is going to be, I'm going to restart the Arduino timer at the same time as I power on the iron. And I'm going to hold the iron against the end of this much larger solder. What is this? 1.57 millimeter, it calls itself. Um, just as a torture test. I could use this one, but I'm going to use this one because it's self-holding for no other reason than that. And when it melts, I'll end the timer and we'll see how long it takes. And we'll just repeat it with each of the soldering irons. If that sounds like it's going to be repetitive, I will save you that through some fancy editing trickery. Um, and other than that, well, I don't know. What else is there to say? Let's just get on with it. So the first victim is going to be my Beku 601D soldering station, which, as I've said before, is just a cheap knockoff of a Heiko. Um but it seems to work. So I will start it, turn on the Arduino timer, hold that against there, and when it melts, uh, let me restart my test, cool this guy off. Okay, I'm back, the iron's cooled off, so here we go. Iron on, reset button there, iron tip to the solder and now we just wait. There we go, 30 seconds to where it melts. Which is actually quite surprising and impressive. Okay. Next up, let's uh, I'll shut that off. Let's try my venerable old Weller 25 watt. It hasn't been plugged in in an awful long time. It's just, it's not a temperature controlled iron. It's just basic iron. Um, it reaches an equilibrium uh, with the heat going in and the heat coming off. Plugs into the wall. All right, here we go. Plug in, start the timer, hold that against the solder, and wait. Hmm. What was that, 110 seconds? 100 and something, I'll have to take a look back at the video. And just find out what it was. Okay, I just took a quick pause, fixed the code in here so that it can display three digits. I didn't do any other changes. The timing is still the timing. 
So next up, we will do the USB iron. And since it's normal mode of operation, it's probably going to be off a battery bank. I'm going to use it off a battery bank. So power on, start the timer, hold that against there, and we Wow, that's quite surprising actually. Oops, let's be fair, 31 seconds. Okay, I did not expect that guy with that heavier solder and a and little battery bank to come up to speed that fast. That's cool. Next up, let's do this replacement for the Beku or Heiko or anything that rhymes with that. The settings are the same on the base station over there, which is about 375 degrees Celsius, same as before. The only thing that changed is this. And I did just give the retaining nut a crank with pliers to tighten it up. So iron on, timer on, tip on. And let's see what happens. Well, that's disappointing. That I was not expecting that to take over twice as much as the as the original one. That's it's actually quite annoying. But I guess if it's uh if I do destroy the fir the original one Having one that will heat up is better than having nothing at all. Still, it's not ideal. Okay, next in is the Weller 35. Which is also a plug in the wall, not fancy temperature controlled or anything else. So, I will do that. I'll plug it in, turn on the timer, and go. All right, so a little bit faster than its smaller 25 watt brother, but uh, not nearly as fast as either the stock iron there, or actually anything else. Wow. Okay, that's interesting. So, what else have we got left? Oh, right, Grandpa. Grandpa's Weller soldering gun. This one I can plug in ahead of time because it's got trigger action. So, peel out a little bit more solder here. This is going to take some time. I'm just going to set that like that right away. So, trigger on, switch on, wait on. Hmm. Okay, that's not. Oh. Okay, well. Okay, back now. Turns out that since I hadn't used this thing for a long time, there's some corrosion built up between these, these set screws and the ancient tip. So, I'm going to reset and try it again. And it's there. Gun on, timer on. See what happens. Ha! There we go. Just because it's old and ugly doesn't mean it doesn't crank out the heat. <laughs> ah. 
So, what have we learned? The Cheap Baku Soldering Station 601D, for those playing along at home, is pretty awesome for such a cheap thing. Um, my old teenage uh, Weller 25 takes the longest to heat up. The USB soldering iron comes in surprisingly fast. Uh, I don't know how it's getting that kind of power out of such a small power source. Uh, basically a 5 volt USB 1 amp, right? The replacement handle that is marketed for Heiko, um, etc, etc, was quite disappointing. It took twice as long as those two guys. My Weller 35 watt, being a little bit more powerful than this guy, heated up 10, 15 seconds faster. And my grandpa's antique is the fastest, but it's a 250 watt thing, I think, maybe more. You can't read it because there's duct tape covering all the stickers if they even didn't fall off. So, there we go. Um, if speed to start soldering is your criteria, there's nothing wrong with a cheap soldering station or that USB iron. Obviously, there's other things to take into account. So these electric irons just have more thermal mass because they have more physical mass, which is partly why they take longer to heat up, but also they don't cool down if you're heating a big solder joint. They don't cool down as fast. This thing, if you're trying to heat, uh, heat something huge and uh, solder it, you're going to have a bad time because it just doesn't have the, the thermal mass. These guys will come in somewhere in the middle, and if you're using a larger replacement tip, rather than these fine tips that come with them, they're going to hold their heat a little bit better. But with these super fine tips that are designed for small circuit board work, um, and maybe even hand soldering surface mount, those aren't going to, uh, aren't going to hold the heat very well. But if you, uh, like I said, if you put a big tip on it, they'll do just fine. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you later.